At this point, I feel like Photoshop is almost unrecognizable compared to what it was just a year ago. Let's take a look at some of the newest updates in both Photoshop Beta and the regular version of Photoshop. So to get Photoshop Beta, if you don't have it already, go to your Creative Cloud app, click up here where it says Beta, and then down here is where you can download Photoshop Beta. So let's take a look at some of the new features that just came out recently in Photoshop Beta. I've created a new document and the first one we're going to look at is text to image. So once I've opened up this new document, I'm going to come up here to the contextual taskbar. If you don't see the contextual taskbar, go up to window and click on contextual taskbar down towards the bottom. So I'm going to click generate image and you'll see this new window pops up. Here's where I can create any text I want for the image that I'm wanting to generate. Other options down here are the content type. You can choose either art or photo. You can choose a reference image, which I'll talk about in just a minute, and effects. So I'm gonna start by typing a prompt. I'm gonna show you how I created the frog that you saw in the intro. So I'm just gonna type frog sitting on the toilet reading a newspaper. I want the content type to be art. I don't have a reference image for this, but let's take a look at the effects. So right now we've clicked on popular effects. We can choose bokeh, digital art, hyper-realistic, all kinds of things. I think I will choose painting. I want it to look somewhat like a painting and we'll just leave it at that for right now. So I'm just gonna click generate and there you go. Here's our cute little frog sitting on the toilet. I can imagine this being a good little piece of bathroom art to put over your toilet at home. I'm just full of good decor ideas. Now, if we go up here, you can see the blue check mark. That shows that the effects that we chose, you can come back up here and adjust your text any way you like. And let's say we like this first one Let's see what our options are here. If you click on the three dots, this is new in Photoshop beta. Now, if you like this one, you have the option of generating similar images. Maybe it wasn't perfect, you like the general look of it, but there's a few things you weren't a fan of. You can just generate three similar images based on this one. And there we have one, two, three. So if I wanted to stick with that one, I can come back over here to layers and there he is, just as a new generated layer. Now I can treat this like any other layer once I right click and convert it to a smart object. Um, I can right click and rasterize and go ahead and make any edits that I want. You can also use text to image with existing images. So let me show you how that works. I'm just gonna make a selection right about here and type in teddy bear, hit generate, now we've been able to do this for a while, but I'll show you what is new in beta. Okay, so like always, we get one, two, three options. And let's say we choose this option. If I zoom in, you can see that it's not very high resolution. The resolution of these generations are 1024 by 1024, but we are able to increase the resolution now. This is new, so you see this icon here on the left. If you click on that, it says enhance detail. Give it a second to process. And now if I zoom in, it's still not perfect, but there's a lot more detail in that teddy bear than there was originally. So that's a big improvement to have that available right within Photoshop now. And remember this is in beta, but it's coming to the regular version of Photoshop very soon. And I'm sure it will only continue to improve. Now we'll take a look at how to use a reference image in Photoshop beta. So I have this picture of a theater from the vantage point of standing on the stage and I want to try and create something like this in Photoshop. So once again, open up a new document and hit generate image. So we see the same window pop up, only this time we do have a reference image so I'm going to choose that but first I'm going to type in the prompt theater and click reference image. Now you do have all of these options that Photoshop gives you, you can kind of make your image take on the style of one of these options, but I just wanna use my own, so I'm gonna to go to choose image, and I'll load that 
theater picture that I already have. So it loads as your reference image. You actually do have the option again to add some effects, but I'm just gonna hit generate. We'll keep it simple for this. And I'm curious how Photoshop will do with having the correct vantage point. Okay, so once again, we've got three options. And right away, I'm noticing that all it did was flip the chairs around to face the back and put the stage in the back. <laughs> so that's not exactly what I wanted. It does get a few things right. I mean, it tried to get the same vantage point. The general look, the colors and lighting and everything else is very similar. Again, if we look at mine, well, it's actually not that similar. Uh, I would say I would give this maybe a C minus at this point for this particular image. But again, you know, it's Photoshop beta. This is brand new and it will only continue to get better from here. Another great new feature is Adobe has added tons more fonts in Photoshop. Now this one is already in Photoshop, so just make sure you've done your updates and you'll have it. So definitely check those out, but one really cool thing that you can do with it now is let's say you wanna copy a font, you can do that now. So bring the font into Photoshop. All you're gonna do is make a selection of that font, go to type, and come down to where it says match font. Photoshop is gonna give you a list of different fonts that are very similar to the one selected. And over here on the left-hand side is where you can download that font. Just a minute ago, to test it out, I downloaded this one. I thought it looked the most similar. So I'm just gonna click okay. Once you've downloaded that font, it will show up. So I'm gonna deselect and create a new layer and just test out this font. So with my text tool selected, that now shows up as one of my options. So let's just give it a try. And we'll move that down so we can see it. Pretty impressive. Now I did find that it's easier if you have a selection from not too busy of a background. Photoshop does a better job with a nice clean background when you're selecting your font. So just be careful about that. Now I won't talk about them in this video, but Adobe has also added a few nice little improvements to the adjustment brush as well as to the background eraser tool. So that's it. I hope this video was helpful. Now go download Photoshop beta and update your regular Photoshop.